Seeing giraffes in the desert is bizarre. It just, they just look out of place. And it's amazing that they are able to adapt to this environment. And you look around at the void of vegetation, you're like, how do they do this? How do they survive here? Until you see um, the riverbeds. My name is Mike, and I'm the lead giraffe keeper here at the LA Zoo. For the patrons that come and visit the zoo, when you see the giraffes, most guests are in awe by their just their size and their beauty, but you know, I like them to keep in mind that they're suffering what has been referred to as a silent extinction. Their populations have declined by 40% in the past 30 years from poaching, habitat loss, human encroachment. The Ornado Grant is a, just a wonderful opportunity to basically live my dream, you know, just to work with giraffes in the wild, uh, work with the Giraffe Conservation Foundation. Thankfully, Mr. Ornado provides this grant, and my project was uh, granted uh, funding, and that made everything possible. And their job was to tag each of the giraffes for a conservation program, which is an important thing because giraffes are endangered. It's trying to preserve the future of the species. Where we were doing the research in Namibia for uh, this project was out in the Nambi Desert. It's the oldest desert in the world. You know, on my trip, I learned basically what conservationists do hands-on working with these animals in the wild. We pretty much had three tasks while we were out there. Is one is just to identify as many giraffes in the region as possible um, and catalog them. As a keeper uh, at the LA Zoo, being familiar with giraffes helps me with the observation of the giraffes in the wild. When we see a herd of giraffes, we have to document you know, how many are in a group, what their behavior is, what they're browsing on, and I'm familiar with giraffe behavior. I know kind of what to look for and what to document. Um, one of the other aspects was taking DNA samples, and with this genetic studies, we'll, they'll be able to see a group of giraffes in this region and know exactly who's related to who so they'll have a better idea of their social dynamics. Uh, finally, um, we attach GPS trackers to seven giraffes while we're out there, which is a big task that involves sedating an animal, bringing it down, uh, and attaching this small GPS unit to one of the Aussie cones, which is the horns on the giraffe's head. If there was no harm done to any of the giraffes we, we worked on. A couple of bumps and scrapes for the researchers, but overall it was a massive success, and we were thrilled about that part. In order to protect giraffes, you need to be able to provide protection for their entire habitat. You need to know how wide their habitat is and how far animals migrate, how far they move. You may observe them being in one location for most part of the year and you think that's their entire habitat, but with the GPS coordinates, who knows, maybe we'll find out that there's one or two months out of the year where they travel a uh, far distance away from the habitat you usually find them in and that is not protected. So, that's probably the most important information when doing the research on giraffes. Being able to see these giraffes in a barren desert survive, it really gives me a new sense of awe. Not only is this population thriving, but you know, they're, they're growing in numbers, which is great because overall giraffe populations are declining. So I've been really inspired by receiving the Ornado grant. I mean, this trip really meant so much to me. Seeing all the hard work that the Giraffe Conservation Foundation is doing to increase knowledge really in inspires me. As much as I love to keep going back to Africa and help them on the ground, there's a lot of work that I can do here. Raising money for their, for their efforts, um, raising knowledge, sharing information. No, I think that we have as much responsibility to preserve animals as we do to preserve people. So if you look at the news now, we're planning all kinds of things of spending billions of dollars to destroy things. And I think we need to spend a lot more money than we spend now to try to preserve things.